Now we want to talk more about the markets, the Fed earnings, the debt ceiling standoff, all of it jumbled together. Joining us for that is Jim Grant. He is the founder and editor of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. And Jim, it's great to see you in person. Thank you, Becky. It is nice to be here, personally. So there's all this laundry list of things we could talk about, but my guess is you're probably focused on what the Fed is doing or maybe doing next in a couple of weeks. Yes, uh, I think the, uh, the debt drama is mainly a monetary problem. Um, there are many X dates being brooded about. I think one X date in the in the somewhat misty past is the August 15th, 1971 X date in which Nixon closed the gold window. Uh, so the only chart that begins to resemble NVIDIA is the, um, is the growth in the public debt since that date. It is an exponential bend. So, um, yeah, so I, I think uh, the nature of the dollar is now so prolific and so easily produced is at, basically is a, is a remote and not so remote cause of the proliferation of debt and therefore of the uh, somewhat artificial, somewhat substantive debt dramas we're talking about today. With the Fed, or, uh, with the debt drama, do you think this plays out in any big way and then we'll, then we'll move on? I think it will be re resolved but not solved. There'll be a resolution as there was in 2011. But in 2011, um, they promised uh, $2.2 trillion in savings over 10 years and the net result was an increase in cumulative deficits of 11 Point five trillion. So, on form, um, and I thank David Stockman for his fabulous fiscal digging. But on form, uh, this uh, I think imminent resolution will entail a lot of out-year promises mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, based upon history, will be negated or forgotten. Yeah, so, and blown by with other yeah, legislation yeah, afterwards. Right. So not only kicking the can down the road, but the can then rolls into a sewage pipe and then drops out in this. Swiftly or carried it's a away. Snowball that keeps building at the further. And then melts. Yeah. The can actually is full of nitroglycerin, so don't kick it too hard. Okay. <laughs> Why do you say that? Well, because eventually, I think. Uh, Does uh, debt matter, Jim? Yes. Yes, it matters a great deal. Um, the United States lives the charmed life of the reserve currency issuer, but I think that the reserve currency is kind of a poison chalice to mix up metaphors because it facilitates. Um, are living, are consuming much more than we produce. We are a net importer of stuff. We are a, a net issuer of currency. And our currency is the greatest export you can imagine. It costs nothing to produce. It is accepted worldwide. But that acceptance of the currency and the debt in which the in, denominated in those dollars, that acceptance we must not take for granted. And I think that rising rates that we see on the screen today um, are the intimation of the market's downgrade, never mind Fitch for a moment, but the market's potential marginal downgrade of the United States Treasury. So far, it's only really playing out in short-term debt. We have, we've not well, seen it really yeah, play the out. The long bond is knocking on the door of 4% where, where it was when I got in the business in 1967, actually. Yeah. So uh, when you look at the Fed and what their next decision is going to be, uh, what do you think happens here? Is the Fed going to stick to its conviction and continue to yeah. keep rates high, even if they don't raise again? I think the Fed will say uh, the uh, banking difficulties have introduced a new sort of restraint in the economy that we will wait and watch, like a physician telling you that you're in for watchful waiting. That's always good news if you're the patient. And I think the market would like that, too.